One of the differences with Surefire is ours are built for people that are war fighters, and we have really take that serious and have done everything we can to make sure we have the very best product out there. My name is William Wells. I am the director of mechanical engineering. So once mechanical engineering has decided that this is a this is a viable product, and we've we've gone through uh, some meetings with our product management team, what we we do then is we we introduce the electrical team and uh, get their inputs on you know the space claim that they may need to populate the boards that they'll need in in our products. Once we get the product into the prototype phase, what we're able to do is we're able to take the product and hand it off to um, our program managers. We also um, we'll hand them off to subject matter experts in the sectors that the product would be utilized. We get this all the feedback from, from our testing, our, our product testing, and uh, what we do then is we move into our pre-production phase. Um, and what we'll do is we'll actually move the parts, the, the component parts, into our machine shop and get, get actual product made. Once we have parts that are production equivalent, what we'll start is actually into our go into our testing phase. My name is Mike Lasavio. I have been at Surefire for 15 years plus. Uh, I'm currently in charge of environmental testing and lumen and runtime testing, candela testing. Environmental testing is we do a number of tests that are based on MIL standard 810. All of our lights go through some sort of environmental testing, but weapon mounted lights are the most stringent. So here in the environmental lab is we uh, take a number of tests that we do to our lights. Uh, initial one is an immersion where the, the flashlight itself is, is raised 27 degrees above water temperature. That's a 30 minute test. And once it comes out of that, that, I go into an environmental chamber where they are subjected to a high temperature rolling cycle. And then after passing that, they go into a low temperature cycle, very low temperature from minus 51 degrees C back up to normal temperature and then back down to minus 30 degrees C. The next test that they go into is a, is a high humidity environment where they do that for 11 day period, but it's a rolling cycle at 95 humidity and alternating temperatures between 30 and 60 degrees. Post that, they go into another test where they are subjected to what's called rainfall. It's an IPX4 test. And after they pass that, they go into another immersion test on IPX7, as well as those tests as we do what's called a drop test, according to an ANSI FL1, where flashlights are taken and dropped on six sides. And then beyond what ANSI requires is we, is we do another set of those drops. So here we are in the dark room. This is where we do lumen testing, we do runtime testing, and we check candela as well as we can do beam intensity profiles in here. This is where we do lumen testing. And lumen testing is a matter of how much output or light is coming out of a flashlight. We do that with this particular system, which takes all the light that's coming out of the end of the flashlight, integrates it, take a measurement, call it a lumen. After that, we do run times, which we take the output that's specified by ANSI, as far as maximum output, and then we take that value over to our runtime rack where we take a measurement every second for the time when the flashlight starts to the time that it goes to 10%. After that, we'll do a candela measurement again according to ANSI FL1 where we take a flashlight and we put it on a photopic meter uh, that measures in lux and we take the distance we are from that particular meter and calculate what the candela number is. So the other thing that we do here is we do the calibrations for all of the test stations that are over in manufacturing. For that, we have a NIST traceable flux standard that plugs into the integrating sphere with a specific NIST traceable known value at the appropriate current and calibrate this system according to this output. We then take that value or that calibration and use it in order to make sure that all of our test stations are reading appropriately. Hello, I'm Gustav Ponte. Uh, I'm VP of manufacturing. We at the Surefire here, we uh, machine all kinds of material from aluminum to inconel, stainless, all different materials. The machines we chose allows us to make our product in one setup. If you have three or four different types of machines, you have to train the people on different machines. Here I have to train people only on two machine types. And the machines Throughout, we have the same control. Everybody can operate each machine. A lot of companies went overseas to manufacture. We here at Surefire, we made it here 
but we had to invest in highly automated machines, highly accurate machines. But this gives us also the freedom to react uh, very fast to market changes, to uh, better quality, to design changes. We can ramp up machines and we can go to three shifts seven days a week and we can satisfy our customers much faster uh, making it here. And, and the most important thing for me was to keep the workforce here. Engineering is about 10 minutes away from here. We work very closely together with engineering to make the manufacturability better. We have a very close relationship, work very nicely with our engineering department. I'm Alex Sue, Vice President of Engineering at Surefire. I oversee all the design activities at Surefire. Well, I think the key to the Surefire advantage is the fact that from concept to production, we design and manufacture here in the U.S. Good morning, my name is Daniel Fischer. I'm the Vice President of Assembly Operation here at Surefire. Here we are doing our weapon-mounted lights, X300, Scout lights, XC models, um, XSC models. Let's go over to the, to the warehouse where we actually see our incoming anodized parts actually where the turning center left off and we are actually picking it up from there. All right, in the process of building actually weapon-mounted lights and flashlights, we have a vertical lift module, which is called the VLM, where we are getting our jobs actually released from an ERP system, actually based on a customer demand, based on forecast, depending actually which one is coming in first. And then we are releasing actually the parts here to the production, to the warehouse. And actually from here we are picking up the parts, where the worker, the operator actually can take their own parts and put the flashlights together there. Okay, let's see actually how we do our assembly out there on the production floor. In a general process actually, I mean we are getting the PCB in there. We know actually the layout from engineering, so everything is done there. We are getting the parts out here. We are putting a solder paste on it, a very thin layer of solder paste over here. We are getting the, the bill of material to the machine. So we know actually what kind of a resistor goes on it, IC goes on it, what kind of a chip goes on there. The machine knows actually where to place it on the board. We are picking up the parts with the machine, everything gets placed on, on it, on a wet paste, on a solder paste. Later it goes into the reflow oven actually, where we reflow everything. And after the reflow oven actually, we are doing a quality check. Everything actually gets inspected 100% here to make sure actually that all of our main components like the PCBs, I mean, which is the brain of the, the flashlight, I mean, that's the heart of the flashlight, I mean, that's where we are putting a lot of efforts in there. We are doing the CPU boards, the power boards, and everything actually gets tested over here for the correct layout, for the correct parts, for the integrity of the check, for the correct solder, actually, that the soldering is done correctly. Everything is done here in-house at, at Surefire. In the next assembly process, actually, for every weapon-mounted light, for every handheld light, actually, we have a reflector portion, actually, in there, a reflector or a TIR portion, actually, in here. A TIR is a total internal reflector which projects the beam out there so you have a really nice tight beam together. So you have all of the candelas when you, what you want to get out of it and you can also see I mean, very nicely in the far distance. What we are doing here actually, we are checking actually the TIR lens that actually it's perfect, we don't have scratches on it, we don't have smudge on it or we don't have fingerprints on it. After we did our brain assembly actually over there, which I'm referring actually to a CPU board and the power boards, of course we also need the LED assembly, which of course with the power board and the CPU board, we actually need to drive our LEDs, so we have a light coming out on the other side. This one is called a metal core board. We are using nowadays, we transferred pretty much like everything from aluminum over to a more expensive one, which is a copper board. But of course, copper has a better heat transfer, which actually transfers the heat much better to our heat sinks. And of course, the heat sinks transfers actually the heat outside to the environment and actually transfers the heat away from the LED. For the whole operation, actually, here at Surefire, we have always our quality checks actually in there, where the operator actually is checking the parts 100%. It's developed between manufacturing and actually in engineering. Part of the role here in engineering is for me is to determine what type of technology that we can focus on, what's new in the industry, how to implement it into our product. So we're always striving to be the forerunner in technology. As such, we spend quite a bit of time researching uh, new technology. 
what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are, what it can bring to consumers, to the military, to law enforcement. We strive to make the most technically advanced products as we can. The parts to the specs, I mean a lot of times is actually we are putting the boards together, we are checking actually the output already, the, the power output actually, so we see the voltage, we see the amperes actually what's coming out, and all of the things are dictated by our OAWs, which is an operation analysis worksheet. The worker goes step by step through the assembly process, and then afterwards actually if there's a quality check on there, we have different type of fixtures, and with the fixtures actually we are checking actually the parts here 100%. Since we followed through all of the steps during the assembly process, I mean from the CPU board to the power board, stacking the boards together, putting the conformal coding on, on it, do all of the quality checks actually between it. Here we are on the final assembly of the head assembly, which is the most valuable nowadays in an assembly operations, in a flashlight, in a weapon mounted light. We have the heat sinks, we have the LED assembly actually in here. We have the stack board actually in here, and then we also have the TIR lens together. For here, we are putting the TIR lens together with the heat sinks, and then we have a final bezel assembly, which goes either on a flashlight, can go on a, on a weapon mounted light, depending on the configurations, and then we are putting it together, or we are mating it together actually with the flashlight body accordingly what the customer needs is. We are trying always in all of our operations actually from the stack boards actually what we are doing is a conformal coding process. We try to build up as much as we can and do the, an operation actually in one stage so we don't have to pick up the parts several times. Inside these machines we have the six axis robot. A six axis robot can articulate the parts anywhere, orientate the parts anywhere we want to orientate the parts. We engrave, I mean, highly complex engravings like an XVL, for example, an X400. I mean, everything is assembled to the top level and will be engraved actually afterwards in the top level as well. Again, here you can see like a KE head, which would go to the head assembly operation. I mean, we, we see here the marking actually a KE2. We are putting our barcodes actually on there, which is afterwards important for us as well, because at the end we do a final check where we are reading actually the barcode actually in there, which has a serial number on it, and actually the serial number actually is merged together with the light output. But at the end, what the customer sees, it's the light output. And that's what we promise here at Surefire. What we, what we promise, what you will see on lumen output, that's what we are checking actually here at our final step. Again, we have the head assembly. We also actually have the barcode actually, which we saw during the engraving process. And in the end, we are doing a check where we check the lumen output. The operator actually combines the, the work order together actually with the serial number. He puts it in a, in a sphere and actually in the sphere actually we are measuring the lumen output. We are collecting all of the data, which is also like for us important, I mean, to see actually that we have a consistent light output during the whole, uh, uh, during the whole process. And then it goes further and we are building it up actually in the final packaging operation. The light goes into the boxes. We checked it during the whole process, all of the quality checks. The lumen output was correctly. It goes in a end, end box where we have here like the, the nicer assembly boxes. We have clamp packs, we have poly bags, we have craft boxes. After everything is assembled and in the box, then it goes over to the shipping department. Lastly, we are here actually in the finished warehouse where we house all of our final products. And from here, we are shipping all of the parts around the world.